We all know that messing around with a demon is a fool's game. We've all heard tales of people whose curiosity has gotten the better of them and they've stared too long into the abyss and inevitably the abyss has stared back. Now, I've got to go ahead and say this, don't try this at home, ever. But just in case you were curious, we've compiled a list of five scary demons that you should never, ever summon. You've been warned. I love a gift. Can't wait to unwrap it. What's going on guys? It's me, Jack Finch, your host right here on Top 5 Scary videos. Today, we're going to be delving into the depths of demonology and take a look at the most sinister, the most devious of demons that you should keep far, far away from. Jumping in at number five, we have Belial. Belial, whose name in Hebrew literally translates to worthless or yokeless, was canonized as the leader of the Sons of Darkness in the Dead Sea Scrolls. If you didn't know, the Dead Sea Scrolls are an ancient Jewish text discovered in 1947, which are believed to have been written before 400 BC and refer to a wide host of demonic beings. Seriously, it's spooky how much they name drop them. In these scrolls, Belial is described as both the King of Evil and the Prince of Darkness, which has led many to believe that Belial is a pseudonym of the devil himself. Belial is also known as the Lord of Lies and the Master of Deceit. Many texts refer to Belial as a devious figure who utilizes fornication, wealth and pollution of the sanctuary to get exactly what he wants. However, in the Satanic Bible, Belial's name is suggested to translate as without a master and symbolizes independence, self-sufficiency and personal accomplishment. It begs the question, whose side is Belial really on? Coming up at number four, we have Sergat. In Latin, Sergat literally translates to rise and is the physical manifestation of rebellion and opposition. His angelic opposite is Aquil. To be honest, Sergat is a minor demon and is pretty weak source compared to some of the guys on this list. But the thing that makes him pretty terrifying is his brush with a particular pope. Written between 1150 and 1227, the Grimoire of Honorius was written by Pope Honorius III with the intention of being specifically used by a priest. Pope Honorius was obsessed with the thought of Satan invading the mortal realm and so began preparing the Catholic Church for a war. He wrote down his findings in this forgotten Grimoire which wasn't unearthed until 1760. Honorius began his training by purposefully summoning demons and then banishing them again in a sort of weird, spooky, demonic boxing session. It proved quite effective and the Pope soon started to get a handle on the armies of hell. He'd write down the name of each demon he fought and leave an elaborate explanation of their strengths and weaknesses. Kind of like a Pokédex, but for demons. That is until he came face to face with Sir Gat. All that was written in his section of the grimoire was that Sir Gat is he who opens all locks. That was the last demon that Pope Honorius noted down in his book. Makes you wonder what happened, eh? Next up at number three, we have the great Duke of Hell, Berith. Also referred to as Baal Berith, this guy is a pretty formidable dude. Known in the Infernal Dictionary as the Great Duke of Hell, Berith commands 26 legions of demons and is a pretty big player in the fiery depths below. According to Alistair Crowley's illustrated Goetia, those that attempt to speak with Berith soon learn that he's a formidable liar. Crowley refers to him as speaking with a clear and subtle voice and is a liar when not answering questions. To speak with Berith, the conjurer must wear a silver ring and hold it clearly to their face in respect to the great duke. If not, Berith will consume the conjurer for not sincerely paying their respects. Berith is often depicted as a soldier, dressed in red clothes, riding a red horse and wearing a golden crown. His main function is to corrupt those that crave power and is often found lingering on both sides of a war. In 1612, a nun from Aix en Provence was possessed by Berith. During the exorcism, Berith gave up his own name as well as the names of all the other demons possessing her, but also the names of the saints who would be most effective in opposing them. That guy loves a good fight. Bringing up at the rear at number two, we have Pazuzu. Dating back to ancient Mesopotamia, Pazuzu is the king of the demons of the wind. He is the bearer of storms and the bringer of drought, and is often depicted with the body of a man, the head of a dog, and the talons of an eagle. 
In the possession case of Roland Doe, the story that inspired The Exorcist, Pazuzu is the chief demon that possesses the boy. He is known to be an incredibly intelligent demon and is renowned for scheming and corrupting the pure of heart. He takes most pleasure though from corrupting the purest of the pure and is often depicted trying to possess children for sport. It is also thought that Pazuzu predates most other demons and is thought to be an obereth, an ancient evil that manifested itself from the abyss and has been tied to earth for millions of years. Strangely though, Pazuzu finds reference in a huge number of ancient societies, from Mesopotamia to Sumeria to ancient Babylon. In some, he is revered as a savior and protector, others a demon who should never be summoned. Followers of the Oberith often carve wooden statues of the demon and worship him in the hope that Pazuzu will one day reveal his true name to them. No thanks. And coming in at the top spot, number one, we have Azazel. Azazel, or Satan, or Lucifer, or the devil, or Baphomet, you know this guy, he's the king of all demonic possession, and he loves nothing more than a group of teenagers standing around a pentagram and beckoning him forward into the mortal realm. The horn prince is heavily related to the image of the goat, and we often see him depicted with hooves, horns, and a tail, but this actually has some substance to it. In Abrahamic society, a priest would whisper the prayers of a village into the ears of a goat, and then sacrifice it in the hopes that their prayers would be answered. But in fear of Azazel corrupting the goat, they select an extra goat, often referred to as a scapegoat, and use it as a decoy. They then send it out into the desert, hoping they'd wasted a little bit of time for the devil. Now, we all know that's probably not the case. He's a tricky one. In the Dead Sea Scrolls, Azazel is referred to in the Book of Giants and connects him with the story of the fallen angels. In this, he teaches men the art of war and also teaches women the art of witchcraft and painting the body. Generally, Azazel pops up in pretty much every possession story ever, and it's probably wiser just to avoid him altogether. Speak of the devil, and the devil shall appear. That's all we've got time for today, guys. We hope you've enjoyed this video just as much as we have. Make sure to leave a comment in the box down below. I've been your host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos, and until next time, take care.